My name is Rivka Lea. I decided to make some of these little biking period coin pouches. Yeah, I've always liked little pouches and accessories that you see in like the market and online. But after doing some further research, like I found that they are substantially smaller than the ones we traditionally see. Uh, for example, this is the size of the Birka wallet that we see. Uh, usually has gold woven into it. This was just messing around. And it really is just a coin purse. And it's very small. Two pieces. Um, the pattern that was shared is for this one. I personally like this one. Feels really nice in the hands when you use it. It just kind of feels right. And if you wanted to, you could put holes in the back, put it on your belt, make it easier to get at. Um, they're a little less convenient for us these days because our money is not coins. These are absolutely perfect if you're, you know, walking around with a whole bunch of quarters or something. But uh, like this one, you could definitely fit credit card and bills in it and stuff. So that's fun. Um, most of the finds that we have for things like coin pouches are going to be a much thinner leather. We're not going to be using cow hides or stuff like that. A lot of like pig, sheep, goat. Uh, the heavier cow leathers and hides were used for harder wearing things. Uh, you know, at certain points, the soles of your shoes, uh, a lot of like uh, bridles, harnesses and stuff for your horses. For humans, I mean, you're it doesn't need to be very heavy. And plus, the heavier it is and the stiffer it is, the less neatly it rolls up. So even like on this one, the Birka one, you can see like it doesn't really, this is after pressing it for several days in position. So you use a thicker wallet or a thicker leather and you're not going to get the nice compact closure sort of thing going on. It's going to be bulkier. It's going to be harder to sew. Uh, the seams aren't going to look as nice. So those are just some things to take into consideration. The nice thing about these, you know, you can, I, I got this uh, pig skin at war for about $15 at Great Western. It is huge. I can make lots of stuff out of it. So if you're just messing around, this is your first time. It's, it's a, it's a pretty good option to learn how to work with it. Um, the other things that I use, First, I used a comb like this for cutting the holes in the leather. Um, this one comes to a diamond point. A lot of the other ones uh, are slits. Those are more for lacing, I found, if you want to put lacing into something. These, your stitches just aren't going to look as nice. They're not as close together. You can kind of see it's very regular, but I just don't think it's necessarily the most attractive look. So um, as far as I am aware, in period, they would have used an awl. I do not have a leather owl, but I have a very cheap sewing one that I do not mind destroying. So um, yeah, I was told if I want even stitches to use like a stitch marker, which is basically a, a pattern tracing wheel, and it just sort of puts in dents where you want to stab it with the owl. A lot of these crafts that I'm playing around with, uh, use household tools, regular household tools. It's going to be your owl. It's going to be your knife. It's going to be maybe a file. They're not, we don't have these specialized, this is a leather working tool for doing beveled edges. You, you have a knife and you cut it at a bevel and that's that. So it's kind of hard to identify exactly what was used. If you're in a safe sustain or a self-sustaining environment, you're not going to be running out to the market to buy a coin pouch. Like you're just throwing it together with what you have. Uh, the thread I use is, just kind of want to use something sturdy, a little bit thicker maybe. This is just linen thread. I got it for hand sewing. It has slubs, so it's kind of a pain and breaks all the time. But in leather where your hole is already punched and it's not really having the same kind of friction, it's fine. Um, you can use sinew. 
linen cord, anything like that is fine. I have a piece of wood. Make sure it's not a nice piece of wood. You can destroy it. Uh, I use a rubber mallet. Uh, if they used a mallet, it would have just been like rawhide or a wood mallet. Um, with the thinner leathers and the obel, you don't really need to hammer it to get through. You can just poke it like fabric. Wax. I like to secure my knots with a dab of, of wax. Um, that's one thing I've come across, not necessarily in my work, but uh, in things that I've bought where the stitching comes unknotted and starts to come undone on leather goods. And that's not good, especially since that thread's already been cut. You can't just weave it back in there. So then you need to do the full repair and that's a pain. So I just melt a little bit, bit of beeswax and I just dab it on the knot and that from coming undone. So uh, you just want to be careful you're not dripping wax all over the place like that, especially these thinner leathers. It will show up. It will be a dark stain and you will not be able to get rid of it. Then just scissors, pattern. Um, the pattern that was posted is this one, which is for this wallet. Um, this is was found in a word that I can't pronounce in Germany. Um, I actually haven't been able to find much information on this. I think the what we have is a sketch from a paper that was published at some point. I have not been able to find a photograph of the original. I have some pages in German that need to be translated that apparently tell me everything I need to know, but I have not gotten to translating. Um, I'm not even sure where you start with that. So that'll be an adventure for another day. Um, and if you want, you can send me your email and I can send you this one. This is a very, very common style. Sometimes you see this end here flares out a bit, kind of tapers up. So this one is, we was in Norway and has been dated to, I want to say the 10th century. Um, so I do have, you know, if you want information like photographs or links to the actual museum piece, I can provide that for you. And then, so these are, these patterns that I did are on graph paper. Uh, one square is one centimeter. Everything, since this is all in Europe, is measured in centimeters and millimeters. So it was just easier for me that way. And what I ended up doing is ages ago, I bought one centimeter graph patterning paper on Amazon, which has been absolutely phenomenal for scaling up patterns from books. Uh, I've been doing a lot of woven into the earth with this. So that's super awesome. Um, I give myself one centimeter seam allowance and then just this sort of long triangular strip. It starts at one centimeter wide and then it's like 20 something centimeter, 23 centimeters long so you know you can just connect the dots so when i do this i like to do it on the inside the leather that i want on the outside i don't like to draw on it i like to put it on and then i have some one ounce fishing weights uh they are phenomenal pattern weights. You can get them at any sporting goods store. They weigh exactly the same as your pattern weights that cost a lot more. And this was like $4 for four. So um, after that, I usually just go through and trace and then cut. Does anybody have any questions so far? My first question was going to be, is the tail that's going to be used as the tie, is that cut separately or is that cut as part of the the piece originally on um, the one from Elisenhof, Germany, which is the uh, handout that was included or the pattern that was included in this. Um, yes, that tail was cut out separately and then it was tacked in on this little triangle here. Um, on the one I made, I put it on the inside of the triangle. However, on the extent uh, or the illustrations that we have, it was actually attached to the outside through four holes, not three, but hey, uh, I thought it looked prettier this way. So 
Anything else? So the, the second piece that you did, uh, posted, the um, uh, father, <laughs> the one the one from Norway, that one is a uh, single piece, well, two pieces, uh, whereas the German one is three? Uh, yes, yes, okay. Yeah, two pieces, because we got the, the front pouch, the front flap, we got the back flap, the back flap, the tie is cut in one piece and just wrapped around. Yeah, whereas this, the tie is attached separately to the lid, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't cut it as one if you wanted to, just to save a little bit of work. Uh, I have a feeling something like this was done just using scraps, and they were like, hey, I don't have a piece long enough, so I'm just gonna sew on a piece, because that's how we did things. So, it's entirely up to you, but, yeah, the, through the three-piece construction is, um, could be a repair job too, yeah. It's kind of hard to tell with those things, so the, I think little details like that and piecing are kind of what make the study of period artifacts so interesting, and it really reflects the life and like what they had and their means and everything. Also, remember, this is not an exact science. They did not in period, they were probably not sitting there making sure their lines for their wallet were true. Uh, I have a feeling it was more of an eyeball job um, given, uh, given how much variation you see in the, the shape of the bag and the body of the bag. So, I mean, of course it could be stylistic, but it can also just, just kind of sewing squares together and calling it done. Um, the other nice thing about using the thinner leather is you can use regular scissors. It's very easy on your hands to cut. And I do give this a one centimeter seam allowance just to make life easier. And then I trim down the edges when I'm done before I turn it out. And that way I can make sure everything, everything's lined up and when I trim it, it matches up nicely. Um, rather than having like a chunk of seam sticking out the top. Does anybody have any questions or Again, like I said, I apologize. This is my first time teaching a class and I feel woefully unprepared. All right, so then on the German one, I just have the same piece that I cut out for the back and I just fold the flap over because why cut two pieces? So, I'm just gonna trace that guy really quick. All right, so trying to think of the easiest, least invasive way to cut out the little strap here. Um, since I don't have like a lot of leather scrap and stuff, because I don't really do this very often, you know, I have this tiny little piece and putting it on the leather is gonna take up that's, that's, that's a lot of leather to use. So I'm trying to run it closer to the edge so I can just cut a strip off. I don't know how many people here are very familiar with working with leather, but it is something that you can, you can iron it. I recommend putting a cloth over it um, and just pressing it, not necessarily ironing it. But when you have, you know, you just end up with like the little ripplies and stuff. And if you're using a pattern, it can be kind of a pain sometimes, especially if you're cutting a really skinny little strip like that, iron it. And then you can, you can iron it once you've put it together to make sure it has a nice crisp shape, or you can just put it under a pile of books like I did and just let it sit there. And that'll give you some really nice, uh, nice seams, because I am all about pretty seam treatments. So I have everything cut out. I just got my, my two little pieces here. So then I'm just gonna go through 
and at regular intervals. Um, before I do that, I'm going to mark my seam allowance because that's a good idea so I can get a straight line. And then I'm just going to pretty much, yeah, I don't even need a hammer for that. Went straight into the wood. And I'll just punch regular holes. Of course, the closer your holes are together, the prettier it will be. I really don't, I really don't like it spaced out like that. That's just me. So now I'm just gonna mark my one inch, or my one inch, geez. My one centimeter seam allowance for the sewn edges just to give me a guide for poking holes. All right. Seam allowance is drawn. So then after that, I'm just gonna go through and just stab through. Um, I think the wood I have behind here, given how soft it is, might be like a balsa, which I think is nice because I can I can tell, okay, I've gone through the leather, it's standing on its own. After we go through and poke a billion holes. This was the first one I did. It is back stitched. So again, saddle stitch just sort of not that anybody's looking inside of your wallet, but gives you sort of a nicer finish on both sides. The saddle stitch. Yeah, no, I didn't hammer it or anything. I just turned it, squeezed the edges, and put it under a book. I've seen people roll this up into like a pretty little toggle and do some stitches in it, and it looks lovely. But in the uh, illustrations I was looking at, it definitely looks like it's more knotted. And what I ended up doing was just knotting it multiple times and it actually looked really nice. And then I just tucked the end over and put a little bit of wax on it. But yeah, I just did multiple little knots like that in the same place. But uh, yeah, on the original illustration, it definitely looks like the end is knotted, not rolled intact. This is where it attaches, stitched on the inside. When I cut the slits on this one, I tried to do it right underneath the point. Um, I suppose you could do it at any point, but I feel like it just holds the flap down a little bit tighter. So uh, I used a screwdriver as a chisel to do that. Awesome, thank you very much. Well, thank you for having me.